Good morning, Karu. It is Wednesday, the 29th of May. And uh, this morning, after working out, I went outside in the front of our house and I found this interesting thing in front of our house. It's, I think it's some kind of historical artifact. It's a piece of paper that's folded up. And um, I thought uh, I would open it and see what's inside of it, maybe unearth it and share it with you. Oh, and by the way, it says it's from, or it has my name on it, in La Casa Blanca, or Tiguin, as we like to say. And then um, it says from Halleck at El Fuente de Gastos. Um, so uh, I assume it's some ancient form of communication. Sabes que le pusieron a un galeta tu nombre. Okay, Daniel. So I uh, don't know what that means because my Spanish is not that good. Um. You know I put your name on a cookie, of course. I should have known that. So thank you for that. That, uh, that has made me happy for the day. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So I'm currently, just an update on what's going on in our lives. We just, speaking of happy things, I just spent, we spent four days with uh, uh, Esther, Carew and Beth, in Seattle, and had a wonderful time. Esther is uh, just adorable and as, as, Everything you would expect from a one-year-old. Um, uh, she uh, she warmed up to Sarah pretty quickly. She was a little bit standoffish with Taryn and I, but she still gave me kisses on multiple occasions, which, you know, what more can you ask for? Um, and uh, and uh, she's she's very sweet baby. She doesn't cry a lot. She's, she's very intense. She has a very intense look. And it's interesting. Um, we would play music, or I played music. Uh, so Karu and Beth went out for dinner one night and I played music. I played the guitar and sang songs. And when, as soon as I started playing and singing songs, she'd start rocking back and forth and then she would go and play. And when I'd stop, she'd sit very still and just kind of look around and hold something. And, and, and so she was, she's very intense one-year-old, but uh, awesome nonetheless. Um, yeah, so it was just wonderful, and Carew's doing great, staying home with her. Beth is super happy. I mean, honestly, they've got this amazing setup where, you know, Beth works for Microsoft, and she goes into work maybe once every two weeks and works from home the rest of the time. And, um, and apparently Microsoft has a program now where um, you don't, there's not a required number of hours that you work. Basically, you, you negotiate with your supervisor to make sure you're getting the work done and you work the hours it takes and you can take time off and you say, hey, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna be on vacation at this time so I can do these things or I cannot. And, um, and so they don't actually have paid leave. Now, of course, the concern with that is that it could be abused both ways. But, um, you know, if you've, it, it, all, the, all the strengths and weaknesses of a system that that limit your leave are the inverse strengths and weaknesses are a system where you kind of have unlimited leave that's negotiated with your direct supervisor. Um, anyway, it seems to be working really well for them right now and they're super happy, uh, which is great. Um, I'm curious about how Cirque du Soleil went. I want to know, I know you guys were up there last weekend. I, I hope it was fun. I hope it wasn't too much with, I know you were working at the coffee shop both I think before and after so I hope hope that went well um in less actually I don't know if it's less fun news um I mean it, it is less fun but um so uh Sarah's last surviving uncle uncle Jack died um last week and so that was uh Ron's brother so now um uh, including so both uh, Sarah's mom and dad had two brothers 
So there was a total of six people in that generation and they've all passed away now. Um, a number of the spouses are still alive. Actually, we're gonna go see uh, Uncle Bob's uh, wife. Um, we tend to visit her every summer and we're gonna go see Uncle Perry's uh, wife as well. Um, I don't know that we're gonna see Uncle Jack's wife. Um, they're not doing a uh, memorial service yet. Um, I think Sarah really wants to go when they do it. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so all of Sarah's aunts and uncles are, um, are now deceased, um, as well as her parents. And um, her, she still has uh, uh, Uncle Pete, who is her dad's cousin and was her dad's best friend. Um, and we'll see him this summer. Um, and he's, you know, essentially an uncle as well. But um, yeah, it's just uh, an interesting time of life that we're in when more and more people we know are dying. And you kind of can't move through life without being reminded of people you've lost. And I know you experienced that as well. Um, Interestingly, when we came back from uh, from Wales, I um, I was going through my camera gear and I found this little camera, which um, uh, was um, uh, Melissa's camera before she passed away, and I hadn't been able to turn it on because the batteries had been dead, and um, I I found a spare battery. And then I, I went and scrounged up a plug. You know, it hadn't been a huge priority to do that. And, um, and there are pictures here from the last uh, several months she was alive. Uh, there's 172 pictures on this. And um, I don't think I've ever seen these pictures. So there's pictures from Christmas um, and then from the trip to Wales. Um, yeah, and that's it. So, uh, pictures from Wales. And, uh, so, you know, like this is at, uh, um, Flint Castle. So in 2019, we took her to Wales in, um, two months before she died. Um, so, uh, um, I haven't had the heart yet to download these pictures and go through them all, but, um, you know, it's just, uh, there's a sense of loss that I know, uh, you feel for people you've lost for Galen and for Mike and, um, you know, other friends, um, your mom. And, uh, and now also, you know, my parents are, you know, my mom's health is, is not great. Um, so we're trying to figure out, uh, I talked to my folks yesterday. We're going to go up and see them actually, uh, next week again. But, um, you know, the, the discussion of whether or not they are going to go to Wales with us in the fall is ongoing. And mom had a bad few days last week and decided um, she's not sure she's going to go. Um, so we'll see how it comes out. We, we got her a treadmill that she could use at, um, at their house because she, they were driving into town to, to work out on the treadmill. And, uh, you know, that drive is, it's, uh, 35 miles or something. Oh, it's, it's 35 minutes. Maybe it's not 35 miles and she's not great. She's not feeling great about driving. Um, uh, so we'll see if she starts working out regularly on the treadmill over the next month or two, we'll see if that helps her, but she has a issue with her heart. Um, and, uh, and I'm not sure that, um, this is going to make that better. So, um, yeah, so it's just, uh, you know, it's that, uh, the appreciation of what we have now, um, uh, is, is that much more on point. Um, but the, the wistfulness at what we've lost is also, also there. So that's what I've been thinking about recently. Um, I am, I'm currently reading uh, uh, Sarah's next book. She finished it uh, a couple days ago. I'm about, I don't know, a little less than halfway through it now. I'll probably finish it today. Um, and it's, it's great. I'm enjoying it, you know. It's, uh, 
It's from the Welsh Guard series, so it's about, um, uh, you know, it's a murder mystery, but it's really about Wales in the wake of uh, the conquest by the English or the Normans. Um, and it's, it, you know, she does, she does a good job of making it a fun book and having everybody, you know, the Welsh, and there's Welsh and English and Normans all in it. Um, and, uh, and those, those discussions and the story's fun and the characters are fun. But there's, there's a wistfulness to this series where everything is sort of um, colored by the fact that, I don't know if you ever read Things Fall Apart by, is it Achibi Enoue? I can't remember if, if I've got that name right, um, about in Africa when uh, the Europeans show up and you know there's this full-blown culture and then it's displaced and it's essentially the same thing going on in in Wales where you know anytime there's a, a conquest you've got a as Scott would say Scott O'Daniel would say a step function uh, a significant change and um, and so it's a uh, that of course is an is an interesting thing to think about in the way it affected people's lives. Anyway, I've gone on too long, but I haven't made a video for a while, so I figured I'd make this one. Thank you so much for the card. Makes my day. Sorry for the depressing rest of the video, but I hope that uh, Cirque du Soleil was awesome, and I hope that things are going well for you. That's my story. I'm sticking to it.